Hi sisters and brothers near and far, and beloved greetings from the Andes Mountains again. Today I want to talk about truth, and especially why is it that many people are not able to see the truth? Truth, we have to understand, is real. Truth is eternal, truth is immutable, and truth exists whether we believe in it or not. But unfortunately, because of the very popular satanic belief system that has infiltrated into the consciousness of many, many people, uh, it's popular to now believe that there is no such thing as truth and that there is your truth and my truth and that you have the right to believe what you believe and I have the right to believe what I believe. But this is creating utter chaos. And as a collective, if we really want to grow spiritually, we have to come to understand that truth is a prerequisite for freedom. And if we hold on to mere opinions and beliefs, then we can only ever create chaos. Because true order, true harmony is always based in truth. So what is truth? There's no reason to mystify truth. Truth actually means what has happened in the past and what is actually happening now. That is what truth is. So our work as conscious human beings is to refine our perception as close to truth as possible. Of course, there are many layers of truth and there are many sides to truth, which is why this is an amazing task in our spiritual growth to learn to see the truth, to learn to really look at reality from different perspectives and see all the different variables, all the different conditions of the manifested reality. And what is required of us to be able to do that is to first see the truth of ourselves. Because if we have a blind spot to our inner world, the same blind spot works as a blind spot to the outer world. So really learning how to decipher truth in a world full of lies and perpetuated confusion, the remedy is to go within and learn to see the truth of our reality. And the first question is, am I lying to myself? Am I holding on to a positive lie in order to soothe myself because I am afraid to look at reality for what it truly is. This is one of the reasons that many people will not look at the truth because they have unhealed wounds from the childhood. They have traumas and such profound insecurities in their inner world that they have developed this external structure of security, this bubble of fantasy, the bubble of positive lies that they tell themselves in order to soothe their wounded child. So they will not admit if there is a real threat happening, like for instance what is happening now when a health threat is being used as a justification to strip all of our fundamental human rights away from us. Now these individuals who are so insecure in themselves find that reality way too terrifying. So they would rather hold on to a positive lie and believe the media surface narrative of things. That all these measures, all this police enforced quarantine against healthy, peaceful people is merely for our own protection. Because they are too terrified to see the actual reality of things. Which is, of course, that health is always a personal responsibility. And that nobody can use law to bind back the lives of healthy people in order to protect those who are frightened. So they have created this narrative of an invisible enemy. And for many people, that reality of sickness is something that they can identify with and they will gladly hold on to. Because they are being promised that the big daddy government will look after them. But those of us who can see how the mind of a psychopath works and how 
In the past, these same narratives have been used against us. We understand that whatever protection the government provides is actually our own enslavement. So that is one reason why some people can't see the truth. It's because it's far too frightening. Their psyche cannot handle it. Their worldview would totally collapse. They cannot even fathom that such level of evil could exist in this plane. But those of us who understand the psychopathic mindset know that control is the real currency. And what better way to control than through fear? And the second reason why people cannot see the truth is because their lives are a continuous struggle. They are so busy because they are having to overwork themselves that they simply do not have the energy to think. They don't think. There are many people that they work such hard jobs. Their life is so challenging that when they get home from work, they want nothing more than just to zero out their minds. They do not want to engage in analyzing reality and sorting through news and then seeking for conflict of interest or any underlying agendas or connecting the dots. They're too exhausted. They don't want to know. And the third reason why some people can't see the truth is because of their blinded place of privilege. They have never actually come across injustice in their lives. Somehow they've managed to live their lives in this total fantasy where they believe that governments are actually elected uh, rightfully so and the people that are in power are actually caring people and that the laws that are in place are all justified and moral. And they live in this rosy glassed world where they believe that everything is what people claim it to be. These people are so naive that they don't believe that somebody can lie to them. Well, if that person says it so in the news, it must be so. Oh, if this product says there that it's good for me, then it must be good for me. If the doctor tells me to take this pill, then I must take it. Nothing's ever happened to them that has shaken their trust in the system. They've never come across injustice. And therefore, it doesn't exist for them. And they live in this permanent la-la land. And if anyone goes to poke them and say, you're believing in a fantasy, the reality is actually horrific, look around, they're like, no, 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 no. I don't want to ruin my uh, happy feeling. I put my blinkers on. No, you are the problem. You are bursting my bubble. Get out of my life. I want to continue in my rosy, perfect world. And then there's the fourth reason why people can't see the truth is because they are so heavily brainwashed and conditioned to believe in the state. Statism. When people take whatever the government says or does to their heart with such fierce commitment and belief that it's akin to worship. And so these people feel that if you insult their government, this nameless, faceless entity that they have somehow accepted as their god, that you are insulting them. And then that is blasphemy to ever even consider that the laws that are in place are immoral or that the president that is standing in the podium is a puppet for a cult of power that owns actually every single one of our governments. But because of this severe conditioning, they will fight for their government until the end, even if it means annihilating all human rights. It doesn't matter because government is always right. So you see, these isms and beliefs is what is really blocking our ability to see truth as it is. I often tell my husband that I honestly believe that homeless people are more close to attaining enlightenment than many of the spiritual people that I've met in my circles. Why is that? Because they can see the ugly truth. 
This story of the American dream or the modern Western dream, this glossy image of the shining city has lost all glamour for them. They can see right through it. They know the reality. And it's painful. It's so painful for them that instead of using it as an inspiration, that truth is actually so crushing that they have lost all hope. And thus they are self-medicating on the street, stuck in a loop of addiction. Many of the people on the street are actually veterans who once believed in government, who gave their every last bit of energy and blood and sweat and tears to defend their country. And when they come back, they realize it was all a lie. It was all illusion. And they are not getting the help they need. They suffer from PTSD. They're not getting the therapy, the help. So they spiral out of society and end up on the streets, used and abused and lied to. If you've never spoken to a homeless person, it may be difficult to understand what I mean, but uh, my husband and I, a couple of months ago, went around in San Francisco and we spoke with the homeless people there. They were wide awake. They could see the ugly truth of our reality. And some of them were more generous people than I've ever met, giving every single bit that they get to the others, sharing their coat when they get cold. People who have nothing, not even a shelter, are out there looking after each other in the harsh streets. But I hope that those of us who see the truth would not let the truth crush us but would use this as the diagnostic tool to heal humanity. Because we need to be able to accurately diagnose a problem in order to treat it correctly. And if we never come to terms with the actual reality of our world, of these powers, of these industries, then we are willing slaves of an oppressive system. I liken it to having a splinter under your skin. It's something that doesn't belong to us, this enslavement, this tyranny. It's not from us. It doesn't belong to our nature because we are sovereign beings. We are beings with creator consciousness. But this force is oppressing us and it's telling us a story that we depend on them. But I'm ready to tell another story. I'm ready to say, let's remove that splinter. Because if we don't remove that splinter, it will get infected and it will begin to spread. And if we don't treat that infection, it can turn into something that is life threatening. And this is what is happening to the collective soul of humanity right now. Our very nature is under attack. We are being told that our body is not our property. We are being threatened with mandatory medical treatments, examinations, injections against our free will. That is the end of humanity. If we give in to this slavery, we will lose ourselves and we will betray all the generations to come. Because if we don't have bodily autonomy, then we have no freedom. If we don't even have freedom to choose if we take a medical pharmaceutical substance or not, then what freedom have we got left? Our body is our sacred temple and the state does not have the right to violate it under any circumstance. And this is where we have to take a stand now. We have to take a stand. We need to be able to look into the eyes 
of these oppressors and say, no, you do not have more rights than me. We are all created equal in our rights. And in the face of natural law, you do not have the right to coerce me into medical treatment against my free will. This is what we must do now. So I call on all of you who can see the truth to become the lighthouse, to be the voice for all the generations to come as well. Because what is at stake is the sacred heart of humanity, our very nature. So let's keep speaking the truth and defend our true nature, which is freedom and love. <laughs>